Hi, this video is about periodic motion. Periodic motion is motion that happens periodically, like a wave or a spring. Um, my video is, relates to Young and Friedman's University Physics Chapter 13, but if you have any physics book worth its uh, metal, uh, it'll have a section at some point on periodic motion. So, um, the first section of Young and Friedman's chapter, uh, 13.1, basically gets some terms, the definitions of some basic terms relating to oscillation on the table. So for example, what is periodic motion or oscillation? Well, periodic motion or oscillation is the kind of motion that repeats itself over and over again. Um, in a sense, our day, our day, we get up, we go to wherever, we come home, we sleep, we get up, that's a kind of periodic motion to that. But this chapter has to do with uh, springs and pendulums. Later on in any physics book, you'll get into electricity and uh, alternating current and stuff like that. You know, sine waves um, and, w you know, water waves and so forth. But this chapter is going to start us off easy with springs and pendulums. A pendulum, of course, like in a grandfather clock and a spring, you know, maybe you would pull it and drink, you know, and so forth. Um, boing. Uh, so that's what this chapter is about. So what are some basic terms? Displacement. What is displacement? In this context, displacement is how far from the equilibrium position, say, you stretch the spring or you compress the spring or the pendulum moves one side or the other. So equilibrium position is the position when the thing's at rest. So when the spring is just having a good old time, resting on its own, it's not doing anything, it's not moving, it's just hanging out. Uh, or um, when the, pen, the, you know, the, the grandfather clock isn't moving, it's just kind of hanging down. So displacement is how far it goes, you know, like when it starts going, the pendulum, you know, what the displacement is how far it goes one way or the, or the other. Or for a spring, how far did you pull it or how far did you push it in? That's the displacement, how far away the thing that's oscillating is from its equilibrium point, its resting uh, position. So the restoring force is the force that pushes or pulls or whatever the body back toward its equilibrium position. So if I pull out the spring you know, from its resting point, then the re restoring force is the force that makes it want to go back toward its equilibrium position, or if I if I push the spring in, the restoring force wants you know, to push it back um, to where it was before, um, or with the pendulum. If I pull it up, you know, then the force of gravity will make it want to go back toward its equilibrium position. That's called the restoring force, cleverly named, eh? the force that wants to restore the equilibrium position. So what's the amplitude? Here's some key terms for, for this sort of periodic motion. Amplitude is the magnitude of displacement. So in a spring, you know, let's say you pull it out and it goes, doing, 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 you know, how far did you pull it out? That's the amplitude. Or how far did you, you know, pull the pendulum up? That's the amplitude, the maximum magnitude of displacement. Um, if you have a C wave, you know, if you kind of cut the C wave in half so that you have the kind of the, the crest and then the, the, the dip, you know, on the other side, the amplitude is from the center to the top, or negatively, from the center to the bottom. That's the amplitude. Or if you have a sine wave, you know, from the middle point to the top or the bottom, you know, that's the amplitude, the, the height of the wave, as it were. And so the maximum height of the wave, that's the amplitude. Um, the period is the time it takes for one cycle. So let's say I pull out the spring and it goes doing, doing, that's one cycle. Or if the pendulum goes tick, you know, for it to go from beginning to back where it was uh, at the starting point, that's a period. Or in a sine wave, you know, that's a period. Or if you're starting from the bottom, that's a period. The time it takes for one cycle. That's the frequency on the other end is the number of cycles in a unit of time. So, for example, cycles per second. Uh, you may have heard of a hertz. Um, so one hertz is one cycle in one second. Um, so you can see uh, that period and frequency are actually related, uh, but I'll get to that on the next slide. So the period is the time for one cycle, and the frequency is the number of cycles in a second, say, or in a unit of time. Um, angular, angular frequency will become helpful uh, as we move on to talk about periodic motion. 
So basically, angular frequency converts cycles per second, say, into um, um, radians per second. So basically, a radian, radians has to do with um, one radian <coughs> is the same arc on a circle as the radius of the circle. I have a video on radi radians in this world somewhere. But basically, we say that it takes two pi radians uh, for something to go all the way around the outside of a circle. So if you think of one time around the circle as one cycle, uh, then two pi is the distance for one cycle. And if you multiply that by the frequency, cycles per second, basically you've converted cycles per second into radians per second. If, if that doesn't make any sense, just remember this. If you multiply the frequency times 2 pi, then you've changed it from cycles per second to radians per second, and that will prove helpful later on. Okay, some relationships to end out this video. So I, I mentioned that the frequency and the period have an inverse relationship. Think of it this way. If, if the period is the number of seconds per cycle, then frequency is the number of cycles per second. You can see they're flipped. So if you put one over the other one, you convert it. So if you take the period and you invert it and do one over the period, one divided by the period, it gives you the frequency. Um, or if you have the frequency and you put one over it, divide one by the frequency, then you've got the period. They're inverse relationships because frequency is cycles per second, say, and, and the period is uh, uh, seconds per cycle. So they're, they're the flip, flip side of each other. And then, of course, we've already mentioned that the angular frequency is 2 pi times the frequency. So if we use f equals 1 over t and substitute it in for f, then we end up with 2 pi over t is another way of saying the angular frequency. So there's some stuff to think about or not, uh, but we've begun our chapter on periodic motion.